ADF for last two or three days. What did you manage to do on the case study ADF for last one or two days, Lakshana? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I made a mistake last time. I don't know whether you caught up the mistake, but I made. Mm -hmm. I told that the accounts are one year old and that maybe by the time we finish up the year this year, that they may show a loss. Ah, but now, because we saw the two years accounts, there was a big drop and we said if the same thing happens this year, it will be a loss, isn't it? Yeah. Right, but now, that's why I say we must read the PC in all the time. I think, I know I have made a mistake. You know what's a mistake? Because accounts are given not for 30th November 2015. Accounts are given for 30th November 2016. Look at the financial statements. We are sitting for the exam on the 25th or something, but they are given the accounts as at 30th November 2016. So, hmm, normally they give it always uh, a period before the exam. So that's what I also went to that one. I didn't read it properly. But now I see it is the financial position as of 30th November 2016. So the, you are sitting for the exam on 2016 November 25th. But the, but the, the, the figures are as at 30th November. So one thing you are very sure, this is draft accounts. This is not yet audited. Because even the year has not yet ended. By the time you sit for the exam, year has not yet ended even. Correct? Right? So they are given to the estimated accounts. Because you can estimate it. I mean, you know by, by 25th and 30th, you can always estimate your figures. So this is surely based on estimated figures, not on final, final, final figures. Because there is no time for them to get the accounts audited. So this is unaudited draft estimated accounts. Almost maybe near, correct? But surely you have to understand that one. And the, and the important thing is, what we know from that one, it's not a question of we ending up with a loss this year. We have already ended up with a profit a smaller profit. So, we have the accounts for 30th November 2016 which shows we have ended up with a profit of 154,000 less than the last year. Right? So that is one thing which I want you to note it down. Then the other thing I think I told you look at the operating profit 420.069 finance charges are 261 double three, triple three. So if you divide 261 by triple three, 261 triple three by 420 north 69, you will say 62% of their profit is given as interest. Is it? So you make money for whom? Company directors are working, the people are working for ultimately who makes a lot of money? Bank, yes, exactly. Right? So you can see. Uh, so what does that mean? That means you have more borrowed money. Why do you borrow? To invest in assets. So you can see your investment in assets seems to be very high, particularly when you compare with, uh, with the other company uh, or the other proposal of Kevin. I want to look at the balance sheet of this company. Remember there are 1,600 cows. Right? So look at their non-current assets. The non-current assets were 14 million 190,675 divided by 1,600. That will give you the investment per cow. Per cow. 14,196,75 the the, the net current, uh, the non-current investment, forget about the 
forget about the the link the, the, the other investment non current investment is 1419675 divided by 1600 you can see per cow the investment $8,869, is it? Now I want you to go down to our Kevin's proposal. I want you to go down to Kevin's proposal. Right. Kevin has only 300 cows. And you can see what is his investment is going to be. Kevin's proposal. How much? Kevin's proposal. I want to see the cow per investment. Description. Yeah. You can see what is the investment. How much? 800 and 4865. Can you see? Right? The Kevin's cow investment is 4865. Our cow investment per cow is 8800. So we can see our method of doing the, the what we there are two methods of farming. One is what we call the our method, the ADF method, that is what we call intensive method. That is intensive method means they are they don't allow the cows to move about. They keep the cows inside the shed and they milk the cow twice a day. The Kevin's method is what we call less intensive glazing method, where the cow is allowed to walk through the grass. He eats a lot of grass and the the uh, that's the way he is cared for. So you can see cow, cow, Kevin's cow per investment is 4865 Now what I want to look at is Kevin's operating income per cow. I want you to note down some of these figures. Kevin's operating income per cow. That is also given in the figures. So before you go to the exam, you will not, not try to memorize, but you will have some idea. Kevin's net income from operations per cow is 438. So Kevin's net income from operations per cow is 438. Right? But you have to remember in, uh, because when you are comparing always you, may, you must compare apples with apples, oranges with oranges. Right? So when you look at Kevin's operational expenses, one thing you can see is, is hired labor. Hired labor including staff benefit 107, 420. Right? Whereas in our case, if you remember, our staff salaries include the director salaries also. You remember we are paying directors 250,000. 50,000 per director, we are paying 250,000. So we can't compare this income with our income unless we go and restate our income removing the director's salaries. This is what I'm going to do now. Understand? Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this uh, in the income figure. Income figure we have got this operating profit. I'm looking at the operating profit before finance charges. For finance charges, it is 420, not 69. But this salary includes 250,000 what we paid for the director. So we must add that one. So our comparative operating figure is 670, not 69 <coughs> compared to the other one. We have to divide this by 1,600. Then only we will say our cow's operating income. Yeah, so 670 
not 69 divided by 1600, 480, 480, no? 4, 480. What is Kevin's? 438, right? What is our cow, uh, cow investment? 8869 or something like that. What is Kevin's? 4000 something. Hmm? 42, yeah, that's right. 4800. Right. So can you see? We are getting slightly, say, 5% increase per income from 418 to 438. Sorry. No. Kevin is getting a better income also. And uh, uh, ours is 418. Kevin's is 438. Ours is 869. His is 4800. Can you see the difference in the two working scenarios? Kevin invests a little, almost half of ours, and Kevin gets a slightly a better profit, slightly a better profit than our cow. Hmm? So, what do you think? Kevin's method is good or our method is good? Kevin's method is good, isn't it? And Kevin's method, if you really look at less, Less protest from the people losses. Hmm? Less capital investment. Less protest from the people because the uh, people don't like this cows being caged and all that kind of a thing. So even though we may not join Kevin, but the why the examiner has given this is for you to get some idea to think, to think like this and to know Kevin's profits are better comparatively. Kevin's investment is almost half. I mean, not exactly half, but almost uh, say 70% or 80% of the, the our expenditure, right, per cow. So you can see if we go to Kevin's method of doing farming, we might have the same profit, but we may not pay so much of interest, isn't it? Because you don't need a lot of capital. You got the point, but I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, you don't need lot of capital. So if you don't need lot of capital, you don't need lot of loans. So my thinking, my thinking, it may be sometimes we might decide, even though we thought that we will not. Uh, uh, Kevin said that you know we don't have time, we don't have money, all that. My thinking is one. Sometimes Xena might say that that we are going to join with Kevin and do this project with Kevin. Sometimes it may be looking at Kevin's figure, Max Anderson or one of the girls, Susan, or might get an idea saying that we might as well change our strategy and go for this grazing farm business. Internationally, a lot of companies are doing the intensive method. But I think the intensive method is good for big farms. Big farms. But for smaller farms, uh, it all depends on the on the, the 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 land prices and all that kind of a thing. In a country where the land prices are very high, you may not have all the land in the world for the cows to move about. So you keep the cows crammed up in a shed and you collect, uh, you uh, make the cow. That may be good where the land prices are high and all that. But in a country where there is a lot of dairy, like in Highland, in this case, like in New Zealand, New Zealand, they say there are more sheep than the people. Hmm? They have enough land. So in a country like that, it may be worthwhile for them to go for this other method, Kevin's method. So my thinking is, one of the variants the examiner will tell you, what if we go to change the strategy from our present method to the the glazing method or where the farmers the cows are allowed to go through all over for that to happen i think you need more land area you need more land area your people will need to be trained because so they, they, you have to protect the cows and you know you have to have a, a some kind of identification all that to, to protect the cows 
and one thing is you can you can reduce your expenditure on the vets because you don't need to spend too much of money on the vets because the, uh, here when the 400 people are or 400 cows are together if one gets sick or it will spread very quickly but when the cows are moving about you can isolate that particular cow and separate him and you can reduce the spread of the disease so this will be your risk management strategy if at all so i think somewhere down this company has gone wrong one thing they have borrowed lot of money and they are paying lot of interest i want you to look at because you need to i want you to look at the balance sheet again a little bit I want to look at this balance sheet, non-current liabilities and the current liabilities, the loan component, last year, this year. The total loan component of last year was 4.2 plus 300, 4.5. Right? This year, what is the figure? Yeah. 233 years, how much? What is the figure, total figure? 3,500,000, is it? Last year, 4,500,000. So that means during the year, they have paid 1 million. Understand? They have paid 1 million. Now, I want you to look at this balance sheet. Look at what, is, what they are showing under current liabilities. What is normally shown under current liabilities, loans, Lakshana? within one year, is it right? The next year's installment of the loan must be shown as a current liability. Agree? So, they have shown 300,000, but they have paid 1 million. Is it right? Hmm? How come? They have paid, oh yes, why? How come they have paid when they have shown only 300,000, right? How come they have paid 1 million? So that is because we do not, mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah, they have, they have sold assets and paid. But what I'm asking is, last year in the balance sheet, they showed as a non-current liability component 300,000. Understand? If you were reading this balance sheet last year, you will think, ah, okay, they have to pay only 300,000 loan, so they will make a profit and, uh, you know, they can pay the 300,000. But at the end of the year, if you are a shareholder here, when you get the account, you will get stars when you see they are paid 1 million. Hmm? So, why did they pay 1 million? So, there are possible two reasons. I want you to note down this one because this may be one question in your exam. One reason is the accounting presentation, both the years are wrong. Wrong. Maybe we, I think they may, I think um, for me, I think they are because they pay interest, no? Right? This year, this year they paid interest of 261,000. I think they have provided the interest figure as the current liability. This is how I feel, maybe. Because you remember this Max Anderson may not be a qualified SEMA accountant. Right? So, because he's from the family, you know, his father's business, mother's business, so they would have just taken designation. I'm going to be the finance director, I'm going to be the operation director like that. I don't think he, he, he must be having any qualification. And the accounts are not, seem to be audited, because surely 30th November accounts are not yet audited. So my danger is, I don't know, even though they show 233 this year, this year, this year also, they may pay 1 million. You got the point? If that is the case, there will be real crisis current year, 2017 I mean, not 2016, but 2017. 
because as you rightly said, when they make a profit of 126,000, they could not have paid a 1 million capital installment in addition to the interest, if not for the fact, right, if not for the fact they have sold some assets. So the question is, what were the assets they sold? Did they sell useless assets? That means they have useless assets. Or did they sell useful assets because they don't have money? Right? So, one possible reason I can think of is it's a wrong presentation and they had to pay 1 million, but they have provided the accounts not 1 million, 300,000. And if it is the same thing this year, it's going to be a very serious situation. The other one, the unlikely one I can think of is that the banker has asked, because the bankers can always say that you have breached a covenant or something and you have to pay big amount. So the banks have demanded from them additional 700,000. But I think it's very unlikely because in that case they will say something in a note or something like that. But I think it is the first case the financial statements are not properly presented. Right. So that's what I want you to note down because these are the sharper points that the examiner might catch it up because you can see property plant and equipment which was 12 million, 13 million last year has come down to 12.2. So one student asks me, where is the profit show? If they have sold the asset, Profit or loss on sale of asset, where is it is shown? Good question. It's not shown anywhere. Isn't it? So, my thinking, the financial statements itself, they are wrong. There are a lot of presentation problems in the financial statement. They may not ask you all the details, but you have to be well aware there can be something in this one. Right? Yeah. So this we have to be very, uh, this we have to be very mindful. So Kevin's one, you want study, I want to tell you Kevin's one is a better, a better proposal. But again, we have to be, uh, before we go into a project like that, if you are thinking, we must always think that the project is uh, something, uh, we have to, we have to go to the figures very carefully because we don't want to get into another trap again. Is it right? Because, uh, you know, the, the, if their figures are also wrong, then we will get into a more problems. Right? So, uh, this, is the, this is the situation I want you to look at. So, today, what I want to do is, so, you remember in this company, we have a problem. What is the problem? We are selling all our milk to supermarkets. Supermarkets are buying the milk at low prices. We can't increase the price because the, the other big farmers also must be supplying. So we can't unilaterally increase because it's a competitive market. So if we try to increase, they will not buy from us. Right? So because of that, uh, you have to think of something different. So one way you can get over this is to manufacture value-added product like milk or cheese. But to manufacture milk or cheese, it's not easy for you because you don't have the experience, you don't have the knowledge because you are basically producing a milk, in, milk company. Right? So, to get into manufacture of cheese and butter or butter or cheese, what can you do? What can you do? If you want to get into this, now you as a you as a company strategic manager, strategist, the Max Anderson also signed my task. Hey, Lux, uh, you know we want to we can't this do this business of uh, selling milk to the supermarkets at low prices. We are not making any money out of it. What can we do? We must go for manufacturing of cheese, but we don't have the experience. So what can you do? Imagine you want to go into some business where you don't have experience. So, yeah. 
outsource, but how to outsource? Yeah, we want to go into that business. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, our idea is good. In a way, yeah, if you can think, it's, uh, I'm thinking now with what you said, not to outsource, I can think of finding a new market for my product rather than selling the product to supermarket sell the product to a farm in comp uh, to a cheese company or to um, or to a butter company you got it not to outsource if you you know when you go to business if you are starting a business tomorrow right imagine you are going to start a business tomorrow which you don't have any experience or knowledge right you want to start a business in uh, jaffna to to uh, to uh, to, uh, ma ma to manufacture shoes. You don't have experience. There are two ways how you can get into the business. One thing, you will get yourself trained up. Go to a particular course and learn how to do shoe manufacturing and all that. But that will be a very, very long process. By the time, you will be very old. So, in your financial strategy, you have another way how quickly you can get into another business. What's the way? In your financial strategy, you have another way which you can quickly get into business. You remember there are two ways a come here. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, that's right. You have we have two ways a company can grow. One is what we call organic growth. Organic organic growth means we slowly grow. We we learn, we grow. But today we are living in a, in a society, slow things are not good. Hmm? You are during your grandparents' time, the things were very, very smooth. The things were done very slowly. But today we can't do very fast. I say, Ma, they want you to pass within, you know, quick period they want. Our time, five years, was the time that we, we were given to pass the exam. But today they want, you know, 17 years, 18 years, they want you to become a SIMA qualified accountant. Everything is instant now. Isn't it? Hmm? Everything is instant. People want to get very fast qualifications, all that, very fast life all over. So, therefore, that way for the businesses to grow, what is the way? To merge, to acquire. If you can join with a cheese manufacturing company, you can enter into the cheese market straight away. If you go and take shares in a, in a company manufacturing shoes, you can straight away because you can use their staff's knowledge, experience. You can give your management knowledge and get into that activity. This is what if you look at in Sri Lanka, all these big companies, what they have done, they have diversified into all the activities here. I don't know whether you know now this Colombo, we have this company called SoftLogic, right? They were a very small company, but now they are selling computers. They are the people who owns uh, the Odell. They are the people who owns the, the hospitals in Colombo. So that man, if you really look at that man, Ashok Patrick, he is a very good friend of ours. He is, a, he is a, just a computer technician. But by, by acquiring companies, now he has become a big man. He has a city hospital. Uh, he has uh, uh, what is this a central hospital in Colombo. Uh, he has put in up hotels. I think he's trying to buy something in Jaffna. He has the hotel. So he has this soft logic, uh, uh, all these uh, uh, computers he's selling. Then he's selling. Uh, then he has got the, the, the Univocus, the cars, cars. Everything he has got. How did he get into all that? Through acquisition. If you look at a company like John Case, they are in all over. They are doing everything. How do they do that? They do by the acquisition. If they were to go to the organic, they will not be able to do it. So, this company, now they don't have too much of time. They are dying very fast. Isn't it? They need oxygen very quickly. So to get the oxygen is to way is to go for a acquisition. 
So examiner might tell you about acquisition. So I'm going to put up a little bit of a mark. I'm going to read. We have both of us going to read this mark. I'm going to send you the mark later on. I think I have seen it also. But I want you to look at this mark. Send it. I have sent it. No, no, just, no, just read it now. Right? Just like in the exam. Okay. So Susan, you have to remember now all these names. Who is Susan? Susan is one of the directors, the daughter. Who, was, who is in charge of the operating, I think, on that area, farm operations, right? So Susan had just asked you to come into West Farm office to meet her. So remember, she is managing the West Farm, right? The four farms, the North, East, West and South are managed by four people. Uh, the mother and father is managing one. The two sons and the daughter are managing the three farms. So she says, come Lux in, and sit down. I have some exciting news to share with you. As you know, last 12 months or so, we have been considering changing our strategy and expanding to value-added products such as cheese. So, you know, they are at their family meeting, they would have discussed, this won't do, the selling to our, these people, we must, we must uh, produce cheese or whatever. At our family meeting, this was discussed in length and I was asked to explore some opportunities. Well, I'm delighted to say that I found a possible company to acquire which would enable us to sell our milk to this company called Milko and they manufacture cheese and butter. Hello. Okay. Yeah, yes. Right. So don't, come, don't confuse this company with our local Milko company, but this is a company in that country called Milko. Hmm? Right? So they are manufacturing by cheese and butter. I will send you an email right now about the company I'm looking at. My dad has asked me to do some urgent and personal work of him, and so I would appreciate your help. Now this is typical family company. Right? Sometimes they give priority, for their personal work of dad and mom and all that, rather than the company work. So you being the, the scapegoat for them, they will call you all the time and say, Lakshana, can you do this? Can you do that one? So you have to do it. Understand? So you have to understand also in these family companies, very, very difficult to maintain good ethical standards because they are family, right? So now you luckily you have joined a school where it's not, I don't think it's a family, isn't it? Hmm? Is it a family company? No, that's correct. Right? But in a family company, it will be very difficult because in a family, all of them, they might get together and ask you to do something wrong. Now you are now, you are now for, for the moment, for next two, three, the next two weeks, you are not working, you are not working in the St. John's school, you are working in ADF. You have to remember, right? So in ADF, when you are working as a family company, sometimes the five people might get together and say, hey, uh, uh, Lakshana, uh, I want you to do something like that. Maybe this financial statement that had been prepared are deliberately prepared to mislead the people. Because when you look at that figures, if it, if I have seen a 1 million liability, current liability, I would have got, I would not think about this company at all. But maybe with 300, so maybe the, whoever the accountant who has prepared, he was forced to show like that. I remember I was working in a company, uh, the accounting standard said to show the current liability, the next year's installment as a current liability. But uh, we have signed an agreement with the bank that the current assets to current liability, we are going to maintain a certain ratio, 2 is to 1 or something like that. Right? So that man was telling me, Kuma, when you are preparing the accounts, please ensure that you will have 2 is to 1 ratio. So what he told me, in other words, don't show the current liability. Show it as non-current liability. Right? So uh, particularly in a family company, you will have this kind of forces coming on you, right? It's not only family companies, even a government sector, you have this problem. Mm -hmm. 
the ministers will tell you to do this thing. The, some people will tell. I was working in the water board in Sri Lanka. Uh, first year when I went to prepare the accounts after joining, and when I prepared the accounts, it was a big loss for the year, for that year. So uh, immediately the people got very excited because all of them are getting a bonus. There were 8,000 employees, 8,000 employees plus the managers, including the chairman. Everyone gets a bonus if you show us if you show a profit. Right. So when I prepared the financial statements, I, I could not show a profit. But the last my previous predecessor has always shown profit. So I compared to see where what he has done is he has not provided depreciation. Right? Wrong accounting. But people are very happy because you show big profit and then you get the 8,000 people get the bonus. So when I came, I was told, uh, please prepare the same way as what the earlier person did because we get a big bonus if we do that one. So I said, I'm sorry, I can't do that one. So it was some in December, the, the, then the, the unions came and told, if you don't prepare these accounts, we will go on strike. Then no water to the entire country in December. So I was, I was in, I was, I was pressed, but I had to remember all the time. You have to remember you are a SIMA qualified accountant. We had to maintain code of ethics. We must. Uh, reflect professional competence. When the accounting standard IS 16 says we must provide depreciation, we can't prepare financial statements without providing depreciation. So the minister, particular minister asked me, Kumar, what shall we do? I said, sir, I can't, I can't change the accounts. I will go from the company, but I can't change the accounts because this is the right way to prepare the financial statements. So I remember on the 22nd of December, they finally said they will go on strike and they did not allow me to get out of the office. I was locked up, all those things. But then President was Chandika Mandaranayaka. So she gave me a call. She asked, Kuma, what shall we do? So I said, Madam, this is the story, right? I can't, I'm also going to get a bonus if I show the right rough profit, but wrong accounting. So then Chandika said, okay, you prepare the account in the right way, show the loss. But I will give them the bonus this year. But when the account, when the Auditor General audits and says that what Kumar has done is right, we will recover the bonus from the employees. So that way she was good enough. She managed to get through the problem. So this is what we are expected to do. We must always understand the people's feelings people's ways, but we also have to maintain our independency, our ethical part of it. Never, never, never do something unethical. Now, for sometimes, for example, uh, the, the, you know, all these things happen in practice. The procurement manager of the supermarket might say, okay, you are now getting 20 cents per liter. No? I will give you 30 cents per liter. But Five cents per liter, you have to give it to me under the table. Right? You in Sri Lanka, you are a little girl, but once you go to the world, you will see these things happening in Sri Lanka in a big way. Under the table. So, so the company will be profitable. Company, because the, what is normally you are getting only 20 cents, no? That man will say, I'll get you 30 cents. But you have to give me five cents. So the company will get, instead of 20, company will get 25 now, even after giving the 5 cents. So one person might say, what's wrong with it, right? We are getting a bigger profit. We have a responsibility for our shareholders to increase the shareholder wealth. So what's wrong with it? But it is wrong, right? It is wrong because we, we are not supposed to offer any bribes or underhand payments to any officer, whether it's public sector or private sector. We are not supposed to offer. So whenever an ethical question comes, you remember the SEMA code of ethics, five principles, can you remember? What is that? Number one, yes, 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 
Yes. Very good. Very good. Excellent. You must use this always in your ethical ethics question in the SEMA. You can get two to three marks additional whenever. I mean, you are not going to write. Now you have to be careful. You don't write all the SEMA 5 code of ethics. You will take the SEMA code of ethics and say, according to SEMA code of ethics, we must maintain integrity. Right? If it is not something to do with professional behavior, you don't need to talk about that one. But talk about the integrity. And say, uh, what we are going to do is not in line with SEMA code of ethics, integrity. Sometimes some person might, if you are working in the, you are working in this company called ADF, one of your competitors might give you a call and say, hey uh, Lakshana, come out for dinner today, right? They might take you to the best hotel in Jaffna, give you a good dinner and ask all about the business secrets of your company. Mm -hmm. These things do happen. So, you are not supposed to go for that dinner, even though it's very, you know, Tempting with Jaffna crabs and Jaffna prawns, you can't go and have that dinner. Because it is unethical. That is not expected of you. Because you have to maintain your confidentiality. Business information. Right? You are not supposed to even to discuss some of the business information with your own mother or father. You have to maintain confidentiality. My son is my son was working in the was working in the Standard Chartered Bank till very recently. So uh, most of the these cricketers accounts, Kumar Sangha, Kare, Maharaja, Vadana, their accounts are maintained at Standard Chartered Bank and my son is handling all those accounts. So sometimes my wife uh, used to ask him uh, how much money this Sangha Kara is having. My son is dumb. He won't talk a word even to the mother because he has to maintain the professional confidentiality. You are not supposed to talk about the customer's bank balances with your family members. So that kind of a thing I'm telling you in SIMA always in the strategic case study you will have something to do with ethics. It can be in this particular case study something like the supermarket manager asking for a hire because we have a problem with the pricing. Supermarket manager asking for a particular commission or a trip to Malaysia or to some other place and that he will get higher prices. Lot of people do. Lot of people do this kind of thing. I was working in a company uh, during that time at the north we had these problems and uh, uh, the, the, the LTT were controlling some part of the territory. So to uh, enter the, the, the barriers we had to pay the taxes to the LTT at that time. Some tax, some amount, we had to pay. So one of those people gave me a call and said, if you want your, because the Jaffna market is a very good market to sell to business, good customers. So uh, to sell the business, I have to send the lorries, the building materials, roofing and all that thing. So they said, if you want to bring the business, you have to pay to us certain amount. So we could not do that one. My managing director was asking me, why don't I do that? Right? Why don't I do that? Because we can we can do a good sale in Jaffna market and uh, get good profits because Jaffna people are good people. I mean, they settle the bills on time, all that. So we were told, why don't we do it? So I said, I can't do that one because it is unethical to offer something to a uh, to a to a terrorist party. So we lost the business. Can't help it. That is what, what we say, the, the ethics. So here, well, I'm delighted to say I have found a, they manufacture cheese and butter. I will send you an email right about the company I'm looking for. My dad has asked me to do some urgent work. So she's more interested in this urgent work than this. So she's asked you to do the job. When you get back to your desk, please read the email. Write me a brief in paper for the family meeting that covers the strategic benefits of ADF of the proposal to acquire milk co as a way to expand cheese market. Your brief in paper should also identify the strategic risk and how we might deal with it. Now immediately uh, in your exam you are given 
the computer screen and this will appear for the first 60 minutes this will be your thing then you will have the email as a reference material once you click the computer you will get the email right and they will also give you something like a board or something where for you to write down your points right so they will give a board or something for you to write down a white board or something like that you have you write note down your point so first thing what you must do is you must find out exactly what the what the requirement is what are you supposed to write what are you supposed to solve otherwise we will be going all over so here she says when you go back to this please read the email then write me a briefing paper for the family meeting that covers the strategic benefits. So the first thing what you will write is strategic benefits of this proposal. Hmm. Strategic benefits. Then second one, your briefing paper should also identify the strategic risk. Risk. Then the third one, how we might deal with them. Now I'll tell you 95% of the students will talk about the strategic benefits. We'll talk about the strategy risk, but they will forget to talk about the how we might deal with it. Always clean in SIMA paper, this and is a very important three-letter word. And means there's another part to it. Always in SIMA papers, those days as I tell them, now as I tell them, that you must look for this and and see whether there's and. That means there's another part. So if you write only the two parts, nice answer, still you might fail the exam because you are not taking just the third part of it. You get marks, balancing marks. You get marks for the first part, second part, and the third part. So just because you are run so well on the first part and the second part, you might not get through the, the this part of the exam because you have completely omitted the third part. So before you start writing, you must note down the tasks. These are what we call tasks. So there are one, two, three tasks. My recommendation is always take about 15 minutes to read the question very carefully. Because it's about 60 minute paper. First section is always 60, second section is 60, third section is 60. First 60 minute section, they will say at the very beginning they will say what are the sections how many uh, they will say how many minutes normally strategy paper we say 60 60 60 management paper we say 45 45 45 four sections here 360 sections right so first of all you must write so first 15 minutes i spend on reading and planning my answer so now i have read i have i'm going to plan my answer on three items. One is about strategic benefits, strategic risk, and strategic risk how to overcome. Right? They are not asking about the strategic benefit, what to do. Strategic risk how to overcome. So write it. Then now I know I have three sections to answer. 15 minutes I will spend it on my reading. Five minutes I will keep it the last five minutes to finalize, to wrap up. Right? Now when you write something, you are not going to, use it. if your boss asks something, if your principal asks something, you are not going to write it and just send it, no, you will read it, isn't it? You will read it and make some corrections, whatever. So there in the screen you can do cut, paste and bold and all that kind of a thing. So you will, you must keep five minutes for reading. So 15, first 15 minutes reading, Last five minutes just to wrap up and to do the whatever the final touches. 20 minutes you have to keep. The balance 40 minutes you must see okay if there are three tasks I will split it 20, 20, 20 initially. Understand? Right? So I will write on strategic benefits only for 20 minutes not 21 minutes. Even though I know I can write lot of things I will stop at 20th minute. I will go and write strategic risk for 20 minutes. 
when I come out how to deal with, I might find I don't ever work for uh, 20 minutes. Sorry, not 20 minutes. Now we have, we have said 15 plus 5, 5, 20. We have only 40 minutes more. Or 40 minutes, it will be one third, one third, 13 minutes, 13 minutes, 13 minutes. Out of 60. Out of 60, 15 minutes for reading. Last 5 minutes, 5 minutes for wrapping up. So now 40 minutes more. Three sections to do. So maybe I will take 12, 13 or 13 minutes each. Understand? So first one, I might have, I know how to, I can write for 20 minutes, but I will stop it at 30. I mean, when you say 13, it's the 13 or 15, you will stop it. You are not going to write for 25 minutes, so that's what I'm trying to tell you. Because then you will not have time to write the other one. Here also, you might find you can write a lot, but you will stop it at 30. Next one, you might see you don't have 13 minutes to write. You can only write for 6 minutes. You don't have anything to write, either you don't know or you have no nothing to write. So you have 7 minutes more. Now you are not going to close the screen, because if you close the screen, that 7 minutes, you are not going to get it back for the second section. So you will go back here and say, hey, I have another seven minutes. I know I can write more and go and write it here now. Got the point? That way, you are using your time very effectively. Otherwise, what will happen is, you will write lot on the section one because you know, you know everything about the benefits. Write, 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 write. No time to write on the two and the three. And you will fail the exam. So remember this strategy. I have worked out this with many students and it is working very well. Right. So now we have to look at the, in the first 15 minutes. You must plan everything. Read this one. Read the reference material. Please see. It is there in the screen, the pre-scene, but I don't expect to do a lot on the pre-scene on the day of the exam. Unless you really feel you have to go to the pre-scene, don't waste time reading the 20-page 20, 20 pre-scene in the exam. Right? That is why I am telling you, now start reading the pre-scene. Because if you go to the exam and start reading the pre-scene, it will never end up. So, we must know the financial statements are set for 30th of November 2016. We must know our cow is bringing 430, uh, Kevin's cow is bringing 438, 480. No need to memorize, just to have an idea. Our investment is 8,000, their investment is 4,000. Like that, you must have certain figures. Did I send you that Excel financial sheet for you? No, no. You send, I send it to you. Right. So you have that financial statement, go to that one. You might find certain figures which is very interesting. Just pick up few things and keep it up. So for example, the cow size 1,600. Right? Milk sales, we know. Total revenue, we know. We know the average cow per sales, all that kind of a thing. So we will have certain idea of the figures. Certain idea of the operation because we are not going to look at during the unseen time the pre-seen a lot so now this is the email susan has sent it to you so because you remember she said i will send you an email so possible acquisition of milko right so as we have just discussed in my office here the overview of milko that have identified possibly for us to acquire it's a small cheese company called Milko, which manufactures cheese to be exported to South America. So remember, we are at the moment we are selling all our milk in Highland, our country. But this is an opportunity for us to go to South America and with a new product, cheese. So if you remember the ends of matrix, this is new products, new markets. Yeah. It is a family-run, unlisted company. 
So we are the family run unlisted company. The company we are going to take over is also a family run unlisted company, which currently purchases its milk requirement from small farms located 100 kilometers from their company. And these farms has 800 cows. So we have 1,600 cows, but for them to manufacture cheese, they are purchasing it from small, small farms. And generally about 800 cows milk, they use it to manufacture cheese. Milko directors believe that they have capacity to double the production and also they could sell the double output provided quality of cheese is improved a little. So, strategic fit wise, we can see we are a real good fit because we have 1600 cows, isn't it? So, from a strategic fit, this is a good fit for us because they want to double the production. And here, right at the moment, they are getting 800 cows milk. Here, we can get the 1600 cows milk. So, it's a strategic fit. You remember the model of suitability, acceptability, feasibility? Yeah, right in E3, you will learn suitability. So this is a uh, uh, scenario where you can use that model. See, what is suitability? Suitability is whether it is in line with the strategy of the company. Any acquisition, any new project, we must see whether it is in line with the strategy of the company. What is acceptability? Whether it is acceptable to the stakeholders, shareholders plus the others. Shareholders, how we know, we will do a NPV if the positive, if the NPV is positive, that means it is going to create shareholder well so that it is acceptable. But not only shareholder, we have to look at the others also. Employees, customers, suppliers, all of them. Milko direct builders, so they have the capacity to provide the qualities improved a little. Milko is located from our farms at a distance of 50 kilometers. So immediately you can see, if we start supplying milk to this milk of farm, the transport cost will be exactly half. Because others are going to supply from 100 kilometers away, we are going to supply from 50 kilometers. So this is a, a something like a synergy. If the two companies get together, a something like a synergy, something like an economies of scale. They buy the milk from, milk from a range of small farms. So at the moment they are buying from many farms. But if we go, they will have one very easy access because one farm, their entire supply will come. So no need to coordinate and all that kind of a thing. You just have to coordinate with one. All of Milko will be rebranded as ADF if we, sorry. They buy their, if we are to acquire, we would be able to supply the entire requirements of milk or milk and we will discontinue all farm supplies to supermarkets of present. So right at the moment we are selling to supermarkets. So what our uh, man is telling is, the moment we start this one, we will supply the entire thing to these farms, hmm, entire this, so this uh, cheese company and, and uh, we will uh, not supply anything to the supermarket. All of Milko will be branded as ADF if we acquire this company. So right at the moment they are selling in South America and they are selling under the brand Milko. So what we say is the moment we take over the company, we will not use the Milko name, we will use the ADF name. Thanks for your help. I do appreciate that you are really busy. So that's all right. Always the family companies, they will put some nice words, but they will kill us to get the work done. <laughs> right. So now, slowly think. Think the strategic benefits, first of all. Remember I told you what is strategy? Long term. Long term benefits. If we acquire this company, what are the long term benefits? Just list it down. Later on, we will elaborate. But just list it down. For the moment, think what is what is the first benefit you think. Mm -hmm. Just just don't don't try to just don't don't try to think too hard. Think very relaxing. You know. Okay. 
So we are in a company, we have, you know, our prices are getting down, all that kind of a thing. Uh, the, the milk market is very uh, competitive, uh, all that. Uh, so just think very common sense. Don't try to think too much into the head. Just think, you know, your boss is coming and saying, yeah, we, we want to buy this company. What are the, the big benefits we have? Look at our problems, see whether the problems will get to interest. In that case, it's a benefit, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What are the benefits we have? Yeah, we, we, we are moving into a value-added product because our main product, milk, is fetching, fetching low prices in the supermarket. We are moving into a new product, a value-added product, and also we are moving into a new market strategically, right? It may be worth, it may be, it is, it is something for us to explore. Yeah, to, to, to explore something, to export, and that's a new market, isn't it? So, so uh, we are moving into a new geographical region and we are moving into a new product because our present product is not fetching good prices from our present set of customers. Secondly, strategically, it's a faster way to expand and grow rather than to the organic. Yeah, rather than to uh, organic. Right? We can straight away move into the South American market and we'll have access to South American market. What else can you think as strategic benefits? Strategic benefits. We will acquire knowledge about manufacturing of cheese. Is it right? Knowledge on yeah, manufacture of cheese. We will be able to supply milk at a lower cost than the small farmers because, the, because of the savings of the transport cost. Now when we acquire this our company now, so Right at the moment, if they were paying transport cost of X, now it will be half of X. Yeah. Because we are 50 kilometers this side of the company. What right. else we can think of? Exactly, all right, good. Yeah, additional sales and additional profits, isn't it? Exactly, yeah, additional sales additional profits. So those are the points you must now point form is not good enough. Now once you have taken the point you must write at least two or three lines on each of the point. So now other thing is always now you are working in the company. Now in your school you are working now. So if, if your students get uh, some uh, award right if they get the best island A level results or something, right, principal will be very happy about it. You also as part of the team will be very happy. Is it? Similarly, if one of your children dies or something like that, you will be very sad. Similarly, when you are working in ADF, any something, any good news coming up, because we know that our strategic failing everything so any good news coming we have to be very happy and show our happiness so if i were to start i will say i'm so i'm happy and i want to congratulate the board for exploring new strategies for our company that is what we call the people's case they make that presentation very acceptable because imagine when they when the susan reads that susan will know he lakshana appreciates what we are doing so you are part of the company at the senior level 
So they know that you are appreciating. If similarly, if something, something very sad happens, you must say, I'm shocked, I'm disappointed, something like that. Show your emotions. So this is why you always say, don't think this as an exam. Think this real, practical, real life. And now, example, for, exa for the, the first point, what we thought, we can say all this time for last uh, 150 years, we have been running this company. And last 15 years, we have managed that full capacity, the four farms, right? And this, I feel, is a good opportunity for us to go into a new market and, for a, and with a new value-added product, which is very much in accordance with Ansoft's matrix. That is what you have to say. You don't need to go and explain Ansoft matrix. Most of the students, what they do is they try to explain the Ansoft matrix. Not necessary. Examiner knows. You don't need to teach it. Just say, in accordance with and some maintenance. Just go to your technical point. Similarly, on each of those lines, you must write a couple of things. Right? Couple of things. So what I want is, I want you to now take a piece of paper, start writing the, be the benefits, as we said. Think about the risks now. Think about the risk. Think how to deal with this. Right? So, when we meet next, we are going to look at this one and see how we can answer the whole question. So, when is your next? Tomorrow, what is your, how is your day tomorrow? Because tomorrow is a holiday here. You are free. Yeah, so shall we... Yeah, so shall we make it tomorrow, 11.30, 12.30? Mm, shall we make it 1 o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow? Mm? Yeah, I will send you a, I'll send you a SMS. Uh, you have a class going on till about 12.30, but maybe 1, 1.15, I should be all right. right. So I will, uh, once I'm free, I will send you a SMS, but round about 1, 1.15, we, uh, we will have a class. Okay. So before that, today you have a free day. You are going to look at this question and put down in paper your ideas. Right? After tomorrow's lesson, you will write it also. You will write the answer. But today I don't want you to write the answer, but I want you to do your thinking, the whole thing. Right. So tomorrow we will meet, but go on reading the pre-scene, as I said, continuously and try to get more points. Okay, so tomorrow I will see you. I'll send you a text once I'm free. Okay, have a great day. Bye. Bye.